code splitting in React.js. Now today we're going to more specifically look at code splitting using TanStack, which is a router that you can use for React.js, very similar to React Router. But a lot of the concepts regarding code splitting is going to be similar regardless of whatever router you use, whether it's Next.js, React Router, TanStack, and whatever it might be. So first off, what, what is code splitting? Well, here in the TanStack docs, and you can see my URL up here where I'm at, but here in their docs, they mention that code splitting and lazy loading is a powerful technique for improving the bundle size and load performance of an application. So basically what code splitting does is it loads code on demand. So only when you need it. So we'll, we'll go into an example of actually implementing code splitting here in a second within a just demo application, but say you have a page in your application that has a lot of different dependencies. So maybe it depends on Lodash and some larger packages that just ship a lot of code and that are going to take a longer time to load. Well, if you try to ship your entire application right away to your browser, you're going to just ship all of that code, maybe even for a page that uses Lodash, but doesn't necessarily need to be rendered when your homepage is rendered or you don't really need that code when your just home page is rendered. So by code splitting, you can basically tell your, your routing system that you only want to load the code that's needed and you want to split out some code that's not needed. And as a general rule of thumb, if you ship less code to your browser, you're going to improve the page load time. So for a lot of tools like I think it's Lighthouse, which is a web browser performance tool. You can, I'm sorry, my, uh, my dogs are going crazy next to me here. Um, hey buddy. Yeah. Your dad's recording a video. Oh, big, big moan by my other dogs. That's not getting attention. Okay. Go lay down guys. Go lay down. And in case you're wondering, I have a German shepherd as well as a border collie, but the border collie. When it laid down, the German Shepherd still wants a tension, but I'll, I'll see if they're better here throughout the rest of this. Sorry for that quick side note there. But basically, if you ship less code to the browser, the faster your web page is going to load and the better performance that's going to have for the user. And that can make a big difference when it comes to your product or your, your web page and stuff like that. So it's going to improve all those metrics and stuff like that. So code splitting, generally, I think most people will get on board that it's probably a good idea, especially for those web pages or those components that just have a lot of dependencies and are very kind of code heavy. It's probably a really good idea to kind of split those out so you're not shipping everything for that initial page load. Now, in TanStack here specifically, they kind of mentioned that for code splitting here, the router separates code into two categories, critical route configuration. So code that is required to render the current route and kick off the data loading process. So this is going to be like path process parsing and serialization, search param validation, loaders, before load, route context, meta, tags, and different things like that, links, scripts, styles, so on. But then you have non-critical or lazy route configuration. The code that is not required to match the route and can be loaded on demand. So these are going to be different route components, error components, pending components, and not found components. So these are basically like the components that are available to you to code split or not ship to your browser immediately. Now here you see loaders. That is considered critical. So here they say like, hey, why, why is a loader not split? And the loader is basically for you to effectively load data for a certain page. Well, this says that the loader is already an async boundary. So you pay double to both get a chunk and wait for the loader to execute. Categorically, it is less likely to contribute to a large bundle size than a component. The kind of logic behind that is that for something that just loads data, it's probably just making like requests to back end or some sort of API or a data source. But like that's not super code heavy. Whereas some of your like route component stuff like that might be 
more kind of code heavy and actually lead to larger bundle sizes. And it also says a loader is one of the most important preloadable assets for a route, especially when you're using a default preload intent, like hovering on a link and loading up your data. So it's important for a loader to be available without any additional async overhead, which I actually think that makes quite a bit of sense. Here they basically go into how to code split your application in Tanstack. So it is super easy. You basically just use a dot lazy dot TSX suffix here. And this is for file based routing. So you use a dot lazy dot TSX suffix. And then you use create lazy file route instead of create file route when using a route component. And here it says as an exception, the underscore root dot TSX route does not support code splitting. So they show a quick example of this, but as soon as we go through th this example, we'll actually hop into VS Code here and just show a quick example. I don't want this to be a super long video like some of my other videos. You guys have mentioned that you would appreciate, you know, breaking these videos down into, you know, hopefully around 10 minute videos rather than some of my uh, longer videos, or maybe I'd just be a little bit long winded like I am now. So their example here. So before code splitting, you just have a posts tsx file here you have your loader and here you have your post component and then that's just using create file route now if you want to code split this all you do is you would still have your post.tsx page because you still need to use your loader or still need to make your loader not lazy what we kind of discussed before but then you would also create another file and this other file would be a posts.lazy.tsx file and here you'd create your route component with create lazy file route. So instead of create file route, it's create a lazy file route. Instead of it just being post.tsx, it's two separate files, post.tsx and post.lazy. Because post.tsx, it still needs to be synchronous. It, it, it shouldn't be lazy because you're using the loader here, but you still want to lazily load the component so to lazily load the route component, you would still use posts.lazy.tsx. To show you an example of this, I'm gonna clone this GitHub project here at my GitHub. I'll ideally have this linked below. If not, you can see this URL or let me know and I'll get it linked. But it's basically just gonna be a starter project for Tanstack. So I'm gonna copy this URL here. I'm gonna head to VS Code and then I'm gonna run git clone and then clone into Tanstack fundamentals. Now. Once I did that, I'm going to then go file, open, and then open up my Tanstack fundamentals project. So I've opened up this project here and we just need to run a couple of commands. So we need to install Tanstack and all of the required packages. So go ahead and run npm install. And then once we do that here, we're going to then do npm start and start our project up on localhost 3000. And once you see it loaded, you should see this beautifully styled web page with incredible UX, but then we want to open up another terminal here and we want to do TSR watch. And that's basically going to make sure Tanstag generates our file route on demand for us. So go ahead and run that and you should see this output here if you installed everything correctly. So with that in place, what you're going to see here is we basically have these different routes here. So we have an about route which we create within about folder and then an index page. We also have our home page, which is just within our routes folder at index.jsx. And then we have a post.dollarsign.jsx, which is catch all route. Let's go ahead and rename this to just posts.jsx. And let's enter this page. So you can see this is basically, we don't really need this anymore. So it's basically just a simple component that returns a div called posts. And right now this is not lazily loaded. So if I go to posts, I see not found, but I needed to refresh there. So it gets those generated routes, but you should see just posts here. So let's go ahead, let's click inspect, open the network tab, and I'm going to do command shift R as a hard refresh. What you're going to see is we load one bundle of JavaScript here which means for my entire application here, when I click through these different pages, we just loaded all that entire bundle up front, which 
in our application isn't a big deal because we have such little code, but in a large application, you might want to split your project down into chunks. So let's go ahead and split out our about page as well as our post page. But we'll start with our post page. So to do this in TanStack, and it really is a very similar approach in different routing systems as well, it's really not usually very difficult to implement. It's more so conceptually kind of understanding what it is and that it's a thing that you should probably do if you notice performance issues. But, you know, also be careful about not doing things too prematurely and maybe just make sure that you are having an issue before doing it is generally my approach. But to do this, we basically need to change two things. Change the file to posts.lazy.jsx. And then we also need to change this to create lazy file route. And then we need to make sure to import that from TanStack React Router. And then in doing that, we can come back here. I'm going to close out of this or clear my, my network tab. And then let me do Command Shift R again. And right now you don't see any change. We're sitting at our about page though. And we just load our bundle.js file. But what if I go to my post page? Well, you see another bundle here gets loaded. And this bundle is titled SRC route posts lazy JSX. So this is the chunk that we just created. So we didn't load this chunk when we loaded our about page or our home page. Like if I clear this again, and I refresh, we see the bundle. We don't load our post chunk. We still don't load it. But now when I click post here, you do see we load our post chunk, which in our application, like I said, this doesn't make much of a difference now. But if this post page had a ton of different dependencies, lazily loading this on demand when we only need it and need to use this post page is definitely helpful. So if I come back here and I do the same thing for my about page, so in my about folder, if I just convert this to index.lazy.jsx and then I open this, open this file here and then I do create lazy file route and then I make sure to import that from TanStack router. Let me clear and then I'll refresh and I refresh on my post page so I see my bundle and I also see my posts chunk and if I go to about I now see my about chunk here. And if I go to my home page, I don't see anything because we didn't lazily load that because it is our root page. So let me do it one more time. Hard refresh. We just see the bundle. But now that we're lazy loading, lazily loading our about and post page, if I click about, we see our about chunk here. This is all the code to render our about page. And then here, this is all the code to render our post page. So that is the idea of lazy loading in React.js. And it's also kind of how easy it is to implement this using TanStack. And, you know, hopefully that covered some benefits of lazy loading, how it works. And, you know, like I said, this was TanStack specific, but it really works similar in most different frameworks and routers. So thanks for tuning into this. Hopefully this wasn't too log-weighted. Hopefully the kind of part in there with my dogs distracting me didn't bother you too much. And I'll catch you in that next one.